Hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. I want to thank you all for taking some time out of your day today to participate in this presentation. My name is Andreas Bitsarakis, Director of Broadband for Select Spectrum, and I have the great pleasure of managing our semi-annual 2.5 gigahertz spectrum lease auction. Today, we will be going over the 2.5 band our auction, some of the benefits of acquiring 2.5 gigahertz spectrum rights, and then also we'll jump into the website. Um, we'll look at how to place a bid. We'll look at our interactive availability map, um, and we'll also look briefly on how to formulate offers um, for spectrum that you're potentially interested in. We are looking forward to our spring 2019 spectrum lease auction, which will commence on Thursday. Uh, I'm sorry, Friday. April 5th, 2019. Prior select spectrum auctions have been extremely successful and the structure provides a streamlined and efficient process for both potential lessees and license holders. We do have some time set aside at the end of the presentation for any questions that you might have. Let's start by taking a look at the 2.5 gigahertz band plan, which is a total of 194 megahertz, starting out at 2496 up to 2690 megahertz. You'll probably notice that the band is separated into two categories. The first is EBS, or Educational Broadband Service, and is represented by the salmon color on this slide. EBS licensees make up about five-eighths of the band, and currently the licenses can only be held by an educational institution or a nonprofit educational organization. The channels represented by green and blue shades are BRS, which stands for Broadband Radio Service. BRS licenses can be held by anyone, including commercial entities, and the majority of these licenses are currently held by Sprint. We do have both EBS and BRS licenses featured in our auction, but the bulk of the licenses will be the EBS licenses. A typical license is four channels or 22 and a half megahertz. For example, let's take a look at the A channel block. You have A1, A2, and A3 in the lower band for a collective 16 and a half megahertz. A4 is located in the middle band and contains six megahertz, which gets us to a total of 22 and a half. It is possible and even preferred, especially for fixed wireless, to lease multiple licenses covering the same geographic area. For example, you can lease the A and B channel blocks, which would equate to 33 megahertz of contiguous spectrum in the lower band and 12 megahertz in the middle band. Now that we've taken a look at the 2.5 gigahertz band plan and how licenses look from a spectral point of view, let's now take a look at how licenses may look geographically. The standard license is a circle with a 35 mile radius. But if you look at the blue shape on your screen, you'll see an accurate GSA of this license and it is not a complete circle. This occurs because the license ran into another license on the same frequency. On Select Spectrum Secure website, accurate GSAs are represented for all licenses. If you've had the pleasure in the past of looking at GSAs on the FCC's ULS, you'll probably notice that all of the licenses are represented by perfect circles, which of course is not accurate. It seems that the FCC only uses the compass tool. This brings forward a great benefit of getting access to our nationwide map, as I'm sure everyone on this webinar would appreciate the most accurate information when in the planning stages. Now, while some sections of this license touch each other, there are parts of the country that are currently unserved by 2.5 gigahertz spectrum. The red shade represents where this particular license potentially would expand out to per the proposed rules of the FCC in their notice of proposed rulemaking. The FCC has proposed that in the first filing window, it would be for existing licensees to expand their licenses GSA out to county borders. The FCC is still trying to determine the threshold of how much of a county an existing license must cover to be able to expand. We have done several webinars on the FCC's NPRM and we have also filed comment and reply comment in the proceeding. If you would like to learn more about our efforts and how and if a new license will be issued in your company's operations, um, please make sure to reach out to me directly and I'll, I'll get you a response in a timely manner. Now, before we go forward, I want to jump out of this presentation and just take a quick look at our website. So where I want to go next 
in the drop down menu is the spectrum auctions. And this page here has a lot of important information relating to the upcoming auction or any auction that's going to come next. So really important here, spring 2019 SLA dates, uh, bidders agreements are due by Thursday, April 4th. Uh, bidding opens Friday, April 5th, and bids close Thursday, April 11th. Here's our executive summary showing availability in the upcoming auction. Now, please note that this is subject to change uh, between now and then. Um, so please keep your eye on this and it'll be updated accordingly. So something, you know, before we get into the website, um, once you create and you register um, you know, your information uh, to get into the website, you'll also need to complete a bidder's agreement. Um, it's a non-binding agreement, which will give you the ability to participate in the auction number one, and also get you into the interactive availability map. So you can use that as, as a really uh, great resource for your company to see, you know, what 2.5 is available, where it is, and the details associated with it. Here, there's a link that will bring you right to registration for the website. Here you'll be able to find a 2.5 gigahertz band summary. Um, it'll kind of be similar to um, slide two of this presentation going over uh, the band plan and um, some of its use cases, so on and so forth. Uh, here is the spectrum lease auction summary. Here's some FAQ on the auction. Um, this is something that's really important and we're gonna look at today. So this is the standard bid form. This is what you're gonna fill out when you're about to place a bid. When you do your research and your due diligence um, and you speak with your counterparts and you're ready to go forward, you're gonna wanna download this so you can fill it out. And, and we'll take a look at that shortly. Uh, this is another really important tool here. This is the lease net present value calculator spreadsheet. This is a very useful tool. Um, to help participants formulate their bids you know i get that question a lot you know how do we know how much to bid um, this is going to help you greatly um, our public guidance in, in this is that 2.5 gigahertz uh, for a rural ish license uh, should be somewhere around the five cents per megahertz pop now everyone's bid is their own um, so please bid what you're comfortable to uh, that's just simply our public guidance here you'll see some prior webinars that we've done um, regarding the lease auction. So let's jump into the website. So again, I know I said this before, if you're a new user, make sure that you register here, um, fill out that bidder's agreement, send it to us, and we'll get you into the website. So after logging in, uh, immediately the availability map will populate. So let's let's take a look at this quick. Um, you'll notice here there's two different shades of blue, right? So you have a lighter shade of blue and a darker shade of blue. Now the difference is that the darker shaded circles or shapes, I should say, are licensees that have hired Select Spectrum to market and solicit their licenses. The lighter shade um, are licenses where our records indicate they are are not currently leasing the Spectrum um, and they aren't currently uh, you know using a self build. Um, you know, what I'll say, you would think that, you know, deals strike faster with the committed licensees, but we've had a tremendous success with the uncommitted licenses as well. Now, when we drop down to the table, you'll see, you know, you'll have the call sign, um, the licensee name, the channel group, uh, capacity included in the license, center county, center state, example city, population, and megahertz pop. Now, I'm sure everyone uh, or, or most on this presentation knows how to get to that megahertz pop number, um, but what you would do for those that don't know is you're going to multiply your population by the megahertz. So in this case, 22 and a half multiplied by 1,279,308 would give you this number megahertz pop. So what's megahertz pop? It's basically a unit of measurement used with spectrum um, and, and presenting offers. So it's, you know, what gallons are to water and what cores are to wood. Uh, ALA, uh, that is, you know, if it's committed or not. So one of these blue circles here, the dark blue, I should say, we'll call it LA Dodgers blue, um, would be a Y. Mesquite Independent School District has not hired Select Spectrum to market and solicit their license, so there would be an N here. In the next column, you'll have an E or a B. The E represents EBS, Educational Broadband Service, and the B would be for Broadband Radio Service. 
Um, some really neat features on this side. If you know what call sign you're looking for and you know you, you have it written down, you can just type it right in here and it'll populate. Um, or also you can do it by state. So let's start off. Let's just pick, um, I don't know, let's pick, let's go with North Dakota. There we go. So everything that is, you know, even touching the state of North Dakota is going to light up here. Once you click on a license, um, so you'll see there's a list here, uh, multiple licenses. What that means is that there are overlapping licenses. You know, there's one, two, three, four, five licenses here with the similar or exact same GSA. So we'll take one just as an example, WMX 663. We'll see it'll, it'll have a black border here and it'll also highlight below. So this license is the D channel group D1, 2, 3, and 4 for 22 and a half megahertz um, in the Stanley, North Dakota area. The population is 10,328, which brings it to 232,380 megahertz pop. So what I want to do next is take a look at formulating an offer with our net present value sheet. So you're going to want to write down that information. Um, the population and the capacity and i hope everyone can see this i'm going to make it a bit bigger so what we're going to want to do is in cell i5 we're going to put the population in so it's 10,328 and then 22 and a half is already there um, at Select Spectrum's public guidance, five cents per megahertz pop. Keep in mind, everyone's bid is their own. Please bid whatever you're comfortable to bid. Um, this basically presents what a lease would look like over a specific term. So th this license doesn't have many pops at all, and I'm sure there's not a fantastic fixed wireless, for example, business case for this license, but it gives you kind of an idea. So for this license, you're looking at year one, month one, $67 per month for an annual payment of $808 if you were to bid five cents per megahertz pop. Now, please also keep in mind that in E9, uh, there is a 3% annual increase input here. That's not standard. You don't have to offer an annual increase. We think it's very attractive to the license holder um, and it uh, you know, maximizes the likelihood of them potentially accepting the offer, but you can change this to whatever you like. So say if I just wanna do a 1%, everything will change accordingly. Um, say I like round numbers, that number of 67 bothers me. I could just change this to 70 and it'll start off at 70. Um, here's the upfront payment. And then this would be the net present value of the license. Put out together. So this call sign all right, I'm just gonna, is WMX 663. So we're gonna type that in there. If you have any additional call signs, what I would, suggest is if you if you're bidding on multiple call signs just do a separate sheet for each and then you can copy and paste kind of this information or you can use acrobat and kind of just switch out this page being that it'll be the only one different um, so this is the earliest effective date requested and the latest acceptable date um, uh, effective date so Keep in mind, we're dealing with educational institutions here. They require board approval. Things sometimes, you know, can take a, a little longer and they can't act as, as fast as you or I might be able to. Um, so I do suggest kind of putting a year if you can or as, as much as you can um, as deals do sometimes take a little longer than expected. Um, here I put the initial term would be 10 years. The max term would be 30 years and that's an FCC rule. So we, we wouldn't be able to propose any longer than that. So in this case, looking back at our NPV sheet, the upfront, uh, upfront payment would be $10,000, and the initial periodic payment would be $70, and we would do per month. If you like to just put the annual amount and do per year, you can do that as well. Um, I think I changed it to a 1% annual increase, so we'll throw that in there. Any other proposed payments, one-time payments, renewal payments, other special payments, um, you know, you, you can get creative here if you have something that might be attractive. Now, service credits. Uh, let's take a second to speak about this. The FCC requires that a certain capacity of the license 
be reserved for educational purposes. So um, specifically that's 5%, which translates to about 20 hours per week. Um, how operators usually satisfy this is they offer free connections to the licensee. So it might be a hotspot, um, you know, small cell, whatever it may be. Um, so in this case, I am going to offer um, $200 a month to the licensee in addition to the monthly royalties above. Um, and that translates to, let's say, four free connections valued at $50 each. If anyone has any more questions on that, please feel free to ask at the end of the presentation or reach out to me directly. Um, on page four, uh, we can list any other compensation, benefits, or services proposed to be provided by the bidder to the spectrum rights holder. So again, you can get creative with this. Um, you know, if you were to accept this proposal um, or, or our bid, I should say, we will provide all of the, you know, the fire station in the town free access as well. Um, it can be anything you think that you can do comfortably. Um, beyond the use of this spectrum and typical provisions of spectrum leases, list any specific bidder requirements or requests. So say, hey, you know, we would love to uh, lease this spectrum, but we have to be able to put a radio on the top of your school or something of that nature. So these are optional, only if you have something to put in here. Um, anything additionally would go in, in box number 27 here. So let's jump out of this. And let's get back into our presentation. Now I'd like to take some time to speak about the advantages of operating on 2.5 gigahertz license spectrum. The main advantage would be freedom from interference. And I get calls almost every day from operators nationwide that are looking for license spectrum for this very reason. The spectrum also has higher power levels and the ability to provide non-line of sight service. 2.5 gigahertz spectrum is known for its great propagation benefits and ability to get through trees, obstructions, and other unfavorable topology, as well as having good building penetration. Standard equipment in this band would be LTE or WiMAX. And we've actually seen the cost of equipment decreasing over the years, making it more affordable for operators to obtain um, spectrum rights and build out their network. As of now, there has been zero competition from AT&T or Verizon with regard to leasing EBS licenses. So what are the benefits of participating in our Spectrum lease auction, you may ask? I think one of the biggest benefits is that the Spectrum leases have built-in financing. The FCC rules require all EBS licenses to be held by educational institutions and cannot be sold to commercial operators, so they must be leased. A lease payment structure might include 10% upfront and the other 90% paid out over the 30-year lease. This is advantageous for many commercial operators, particularly smaller operators that might have a high cost of capital or a challenge borrowing all the money up front. So going back to some of the FCC requirements, I'd like to touch on some of those uh, that the FCC has in order to ensure all license and leases remain in good standing with the commission. The FCC requires that a part of the license, specifically 5%, is reserved for educational purposes. This is typically, again, accomplished by giving the license holder a certain number of free accounts that can be used on the network, also known as service credits. The maximum duration for any lease signed today is 30 years, but any lease signed prior to January 10th, 2005 has a maximum term of 15 years. So if a lease was signed in 2003, it would have expired in 2018, regardless of what the lease stated. Now that we've gone over the background information about 2.5 gigahertz licenses, I would like to spend some time talking about the auction process and what to expect after the first bid date. Um, so first, I, I should clarify, it, it's less of an auction, even though we use the term auction, and more of a secondary marketplace. This isn't like um, eBay, for example, where if you're the highest bidder, the baseball glove you know, lands on your doorstep. Uh, the licensees are not obligated to proceed with any offer unless they choose to do so. Um, it is a sealed process and the values of bids are confidential to everyone other than us here at Select Spectrum because of course we're processing them. Uh, to date, we have done more than 200 licensed transactions in the 2.5 gigahertz band. Um, in our prior auctions, the bids ranged from less than four cents per megahertz pop to greater than 20 cents per megahertz pop.
So in the upcoming auction, we have more than 285 2.5 gigahertz licenses uh, that will be featured. Completed agreements are going to be due by 11 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday, April 4th. Auction bidding begins at 9 a.m. Eastern time, Friday, April 5th. And auction bidding ends a week later, 11 p.m. Eastern time, Thursday, April 12th. The offers will be presented to the license holders uh, probably at latest by Thursday, April 19th, after they go through our initial analysis. Um, you know, we make them look really pretty with cover letters uh, before we present them. Again, um, you know, jumping back to the website, please find our bidder's agreement if you haven't filled one out already at uh, www.selectspectrum.com slash SLA. Um, last call for bidders webinar will be Thursday, March 28th at 2 p.m. Eastern. You can register now on our homepage. The, uh, the link is there. Uh, it'll be similar content to today's presentation, um, maybe a few different things, but mostly for those that couldn't make it today. So I thank you all for coming today. Um, please go ahead and follow us on, on Twitter at Select Spectrum, YouTube Select Spectrum, and our website is plugged there as well. Uh, my contact info is on this slide. Please feel free to shoot me an email or give me a call if you have any questions.